So let's get started with the December 2023 themes. And this, I feel like, like it's the big theme um, for the last month even, but especially the last couple of weeks. And if you were here um, in the channeled session that we did last week, um, that was a big thing that was, I think it was the first thing that the Bladian said, you're being asked to find new ways of being. And it's something that they keep repeating. I keep hearing it. I actually uploaded on my YouTube that part. So if you're watching on YouTube or if you want to find that video, it's uh, one of my latest uh, channel messages. Um, I like the fact that when we channeled last week, they said something along the lines of you're being asked, um, guided to find. Some of you might feel like you're being pushed <laughs> to find new ways of being, gently pushed. But you're being asked to find new ways of being means we are changing and evolving at a rapid pace right now. We're receiving a lot of new information, aka light codes, very heightened, potent light codes. And then our bodies are adjusting to, to this because we are being um, affected in a positive way, but at a cellular level. So your body is giving you signs of things that are not resonating, not sitting well with you anymore. Okay, And that can be applied to many aspects in your life. And it's really individual. Um, and so a few things that... Um, a few prompts. I'll give you prompts, by the way, for each um, of these themes so that you can reflect on maybe now, maybe later. And you'll have the PDF as well of these prompts and these slides inside the Star Secret. But I encourage you to think which areas of um, my life am I being asked to find new ways of being? Um, is it professionally? Is it in my relationship? Or it could be a simple thing like is it the toothpaste that I'm using that's not really making me feel good anymore? Is it the shampoo that I'm using? Is it the type? Is it the type of clothing that I'm wearing? Is it the type of exercises that I'm that I'm doing? Is it the type of water that I'm drinking? So it could be small, very significant things because these are the things you do every day. Um, so, for example, just give a quick example. I um, have been going to the gym, doing weightlifting for almost 15 years. But around this time last year, I had a minor injury in my cervical, in my back. And so that was a catalyst for me, first of all, to go back to my yoga practice more consistently and regularly. I started doing it every day, but also trying to find new ways of exercising. But I was a little bit stubborn and resisting because that was very familiar to me. I would go to the gym. I know I knew what I had to do. But I've been experimenting with different types of exercises. And as of recently, I've been doing more body weight um, calisthenics and body weight training, which is new for me. Um, but I can feel that my body is responding really well to that type of training. And I can literally feel my body saying thank you after every workout. It just feels light and strong in a holistic way. So... I wonder why didn't I do it before, right? But it's just the process. And that's just an example of something that, you know, we can change. And sometimes the change happens quickly. Sometimes it doesn't because you need, you need to feel how you're going to find this new way of being or this new thing, this new exercise routine, this new job or this new product, okay? But a tip is, and very important tip, it's the key, actually, it's to connect with the intelligence of your body. So like I said, I can feel my body saying, thank you. You know, every time I've been doing more um, green juices in the morning too, not every day, but every other day. And when I do it, I feel my body saying, thank you. And I, re I really feel the cleansing more um, strongly in my body. Okay. And also connect with your intuition, rule of thumb for everything in life, connect with your higher self, because your intuition, your higher self will guide you through this journey of finding new ways of being. If you're connected with your intuition, you will know mm, this is resonating. Maybe this is the right um, routine for me. Maybe this is the right um, program for me. Maybe this is the right food for me. Maybe this is the right juice for me. Okay. And 
I feel very strongly that this is a 2024 theme and beyond because it will keep changing. The shifts keep coming at a rapid pace. So yeah, it will keep coming. It's not just for this month. And so a prompt that I'll give you, and it's something that I believe the Bladen said last week too, is make a list of the things that you've not been resonating with over the last few months, maybe even over the last few years and see alternatives set intention to be shown and guided to the right products, to the right people, to the right places. And then you can prioritize what you can change now because it can be a little overwhelming because you might be thinking, oh my God, I have to change so many things or I want to change so many things, but really make a list, get it out of your system, look at it practically, and then set the intention to be shown, to be guided to the right places. And also prioritize the things that you can change. Now, you won't be able to change everything at once. You won't be able to change your diet and your products and your routine and your job and everything. Make a priority. What can I change now? Just one step at a time. Next theme, radical self-care, which is kind of related to finding new ways of being too, similar to the example I, I gave you about my shifting in, in my exercise routine. But the vision I had when I asked for, um, you know, what's what are the energy themes this month? It was really funny, actually, because I had a vision of a teapot. <laughs> and I was just kind of laughing um, and asking, what exactly does this mean? So I just had this feeling of watching the water slowly boiling, you know, putting the herbs and let it simmer and then just waiting for it to be ready so that I can enjoy my tea and taking the time to do it and making it the time to just enjoy being there, observing the environment and your feelings and your thoughts. So for me, that was a vision that equaled self-care and mindfulness, you know, taking time, making time for yourself to enjoy the moment, to be present. You don't have to be doing anything. You don't have to be rushing to anything. Just making the time to appreciate where you are today. And on a larger scale too, is to be present and appreciative of the year that and, and the moment that you're in. So there's a lot of room for reflection um, and gratitude as the, end, the, the, the year ends. And also to make room to receive because when you're in that state of doing 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 busy 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 you're not really making room to receive more things so it's just a really great important reminder for you to make time to just be open your heart make room acknowledge be grateful for what happened this year in the past and then make room for the future for now for the future by being now okay the irony of mindfulness and so a prompt that I give you, um, make use of this renewal energy to reflect and be grateful. Um, journaling is also really great. Um, solstice is around the corner, 2021st. So that's also a really great moment to meditate, be grateful, and then set intentions for the future. Um, and as I said last week, I'm doing an event on the 20th. I'm not sure if it's on the 20th or the 21st. I said the 20th. I think I'm going to stick to the 20th, but it will be a solstice 2024 activation. Okay. I'm still getting some information from the Pleiadians. Another theme this month, and that's because it's the beginning, it's it's in Sagittarius, and then the, the next, the end is a Capricorn. So these two energies, these two signs, they sort of balance out. Okay. Because this the Sagittarius energy is more adventurous, more spontaneous. Whereas the Capricorn or, or the, the real uh, Capricorn, because I'm a Capricorn and I like structure and self-discipline, um, but it can be too much. Both of these energies can be too much. So it's really nice to balance them out. And so it depends on you know your personality and where you are at the moment. But you can ask yourself this question, where in my life can I allow myself to let loose be more adventurous, be more spontaneous, okay? Or where in my life do I need more structure and self-discipline? And you'll find that there are aspects in your life that you need more of that Sagittarius energy, aspects in your life that you need more of that Capricorn energy, okay? It's, they're, they're, they're great um, opposites that balance each other out, okay? For me, for me, for example, I benefit more from asking my question this question where can I allow myself to let loose be more adventurous be more spontaneous not plan much enjoy 
a different restaurant, go to the movies, go out with friends, these kind of things, okay? And then another theme is the throat chakra, which has been a theme over the last couple of months, um, but, it, but now there's a new level of opening and activation, and you might be feeling this. So it's a deeper level of sovereignty, and even though we're talking about the throat chakra, it's a very heart chakra um, energy. Sovereignty is very much related to your heart center, your heart space. The Pleiadians always say, when you're in, a, in your heart center, you are sovereign. So there's a deeper level in sovereignty. And that's also in continuation with last month's themes. Um, when I when I was talking about this deeper awareness of what sovereignty means to you. So these two themes are very much linked. But it feels like because you're gaining that awareness of what sovereignty means to you, you are now speaking your truth and not allowing others to get away with things, which in the past, maybe you did for reasons that can be, you know, why bother? That was that was my reason. Or even victimhood wounds or just lack of awareness, really. Like you didn't notice that you were doing this, but now you do. So when somebody says something that it doesn't feel right, doesn't sit right, you just tell them straight away, you can be kind, you can be assertive, you can be straightforward, you don't have to be rude, you don't have to be angry. You can, that these are emotions, natural emotions, but just finding ways, new ways of being, finding ways to be more comfortable with speaking your truth. And as you step in into your authenticity, as you evolve, as you're speaking your truth, as you become more of your sovereign self, this might trigger others, right? But that tells more about them and where they are. And even though it's challenging, the challenge is also an opportunity for you to connect again with that heart center, connect with, with your sovereignty, connect with that throat chakra. A prompt, where in my life am I still adjusting or hiding parts of myself? Maybe you go to places or you're around friends and families and you're like adjusting or just not speaking much or hiding parts of yourself because of fear, victimhood wounds, lack of awareness, but now you are more aware. It doesn't necessarily mean that you have to just cut people off or not, you know, have friends anymore, but just speaking your truth. And maybe these triggers can be positive, can shift the relationship, can shift the dynamic of the relationships or it can it might um uh put people away it might but also you just have to take the risk you know because you're not um yeah you're just not hiding yourself anymore okay and so also an affirmation that's really good for this is just to keep telling yourself that it's safe to speak my truth and own who i am at this moment knowing that you're changing too so be open to change, be flexible in this journey of life, but know that it's safe to speak my truth and own who you are at this moment. Another theme that came up for me was for the collective was this joy as a thermometer. Let your joy be a thermometer for you and guide you through the next steps and choices. You might be going through these changes and shifts. Sometimes you have to make choices, you have to make decisions or you're just not resonating with certain things, with certain people, certain places. So let your joy be a thermometer. And the joy doesn't necessarily have to uh, be mm, real, quote unquote, real, uh, because you can visualize things and feel that joy. Joy is a feeling. It's a subtle energy thing. So you can feel it and let that be your thermo thermometer for it choice for a next step. So you can use, use visualization. So you can visualize yourself in a scenario. Um, let's say you have to make a decision or you want to make a decision A, B. You can visualize those two scenarios and see how much joy, if any, you feel. And that is your thermometer. That is your guidance. That is your inner guidance. And lastly, um, last month, one of the themes was that, you know, we were ready for the next year. 2024 was the was the, the year eight, was the infinite symbol. Um, you might remember, if you want to check it out, it's in the platform on the Starseed Grid, November 2023 themes. It's also on my YouTube, the, just the energy themes for last month. So one thing that I kept asking was, is is it the new, new year already, December? Is it the new year already? Or is it more like a gap, gap between 2023 and 2024? 
And then what I heard was that energetically is already the new year. So in December now, we're already in the new year energetically. But they said that this month feels like the prologue of a new book. <laughs> and I thought that was really interesting because I probably wouldn't come up with a prologue of a new book. But I thought it was a, an interesting analogy. Um, and here it says a prologue is a separate introductory section of a literary work that comes before the main narrative. It sets the stage for the story or provides background information about the character's setting or events. So it does feel like this is the month that you're we're just getting prepared, right? So it may be, maybe it may not feel like there's too much action, like too much movement already, but it does feel like a prepar preparation, you're getting information, maybe some tools for this new adventure ahead in this new book and chapters. And it felt to me like 2024 was a chapter more than a book because we're going into a new octave in our evolution. It's a new journey okay so it feels like it's just the beginning and we're reading the prologue when you're reading the prologue you're just excited about reading this book or you have questions or you wonder right so the tip the prompt is just to stay observant of the shifts of the information of the feelings and be excited for what's next be excited to read these new chapters and not just to read but to co-create because you're co-creating the reality. You, you're co-creating this ascension, okay? So you're not just going to be passively reading, but you're going to be co-writing, co-creating this new reality. And so be excited for this. And that leads me to just a teaser of 2024 energy theme. Um, I still haven't got, you know, all the, the details of this, but for me, this is like the main theme of 2024 for now. Um, because it feels 2024 feels like another 2011 2012 in terms of the awakening the mass collective so 2020 2011 2012 was the mayan calendar the end date of the mayan calendar that um, basically represented it was a new level of awareness a new level of consciousness being uh, available for humanity and so it does feel like another one of those and from 2024 on those who are and have been consciously in this ascension process, you, us, will catapult in their journey in ways that they couldn't have imagined. And those who are new to the spiritual awakening will also have the opportunities, which most often is are presented as challenges, but they are presented the, that opportunity to jump higher octaves. And those that resist will find more struggles and suffering. And those who remain completely oblivious to um, these new layers of reality, these new realities will continue to feel stuck in their own ways. But I've heard that in the next two decades or so, it will be really hard to go against the awakening waves. So exciting times. Um, nobody's saying it's going to be easy, <laughs> as you know, but it's exciting nonetheless. So I guess the overall message is just to really be here right now, be in the presence of the shifts and the ascension, and be excited for what's to come. <laughs>